We're on the red carpet here for Super 8 with Neville Page, the creature designer. Hi Neville, um, did writer and director J.J. Abrams have a very specific thing in mind for the creature when he approached you? The one specific thing was the most terrifying thing. He wanted something that was iconic, has never been seen before, and absolutely fierce, provocative, scary, and new. So they went here and they were like, oh, that one again, how am I going to do it? So it was, it was intimidating, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and obviously in the script, the creature had to be able to do certain things and perform certain actions. Was that also a, a consideration when you were designing? Huge, huge consideration, uh, because you can't perform follow a function. You know, if you're designing an airplane, you better have weight. Yeah. So it needed to dig, it needed to disassemble, it needed to assemble. A lot of the things it had to do. And some of them were contradictory to how the creature would be. Yeah. So trying to consolidate and make an amalgam of all these requirements was challenging and then also make it new and, and fierce and raw and set it. Yeah. It was a tall order. Yeah, yeah. Um, aside from uh, Super 8, what's your favorite monster movie? It's so much fun. My favorite is, and I think, always will be Alien. Yeah. You know, the glider, H.R. Geiger's Alien with the Scout Alien. It's, um, I still consider the movie a perfect movie yeah. for so many reasons. But that feature in its day was so incredibly new and all the glider's work. Um, and you should, because it's done some amazing stuff. Uh, it, it, it's incredible uh, that he owns an aesthetic, yeah. and I can only dream of, of creating something or developing my craft so well that I own an aesthetic. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so what was it like to work on Prometheus then? What's, what's it been like? Oh, just sitting in the same room as Ridley and having a coffin, yeah. that would have been enough. I'd have been satisfied with that experience. But to work on it for a year um, as one of the designers, kind of unbelievable. Because it's kind of it's the journey. I don't know what the end result is yet. I can only imagine because it's really you can let go and just trust that it's going to be phenomenal. But the, the journey of working with him and having meetings with him about the stuff that I've done is is truly. I, I can almost end my career now and go. <laughs> yeah, I've done. I've done what I need to do. Moving on. Yeah. Um, and are we going to see your work on Avatar uh, sequels and on Star Trek sequels as well? I hope so. You know, it, with Avatar, there's no confirmation uh, to me, at least, of when it's going to happen. I believe it is going to happen. So I was a kid Star Trek. I'm, I'm ready for it to happen. Boys are ready. Heads are sharpened. So yeah, anything that JJ has got, I just hope there's no conflict with uh, time. But yeah. yeah. I don't know what I'd do. Yeah. Um, and you've been working on uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea as well. What can you tell us about that? What's the Nautilus going to look like? You know what? That production ended some time ago. Yeah. It, it kills me because working on, I mean, that, that's one of my favorite things yeah. um, as well. But designing creatures for that, to, to work on those creatures, were pretty phenomenal. But it went fell up. Uh, like after they had designed uh, a Nautilus, which was extremely cool, and uh, I wish I could tell you more about it, but I, you know, yeah. they weren't resurrected, so exactly. gotta, it's, it's gotta it's be hush Okay, sure all right. Well, thanks very much for talking to us. Thanks for sharing nothing with you. <laughs> <laughs>